Greetings, Admirals. This is the Sarcasm Detector coming to you from the bridge of the brand new Zal Heavy Cruiser T6, which is now available from the Lobby Store with the recent release of the Year of Hell lockbox and Season 10.5. I'm going to take a quick look around the bridge. It has the standard amenities that all one room interiors have and comes in a very nice salmon pink color. Nothing too interesting to see here, but I thought I'd show it to you first before we go and take a look at the ship itself. So here we have the Zal Heavy Cruiser Tier 6. The visuals that I'm showing right here are the default Starship Taylor visuals that the ship was unboxed in. Just going to take a quick tour around the ship. Going to show you some of the other visuals from the different reputation shields available in the game a little bit later on in the video. But first, we're going to be taking a look at the ship's stats itself first. First, the mastery traits. I already have it fully mastered. It has physical and kinetic damage, hull regeneration, all energy damage plus radiation, some extra hull, 10%, and the trait Invincibility, or Invincible. What this trait does is when you hit 5% hull, you become unkillable, and your healing, hull healing, and shield healing is buffed. Now, there is a problem with this trait. Um, it's not a bug, it's intentional. As a tactical captain, your go-down fighting ability is locked out completely until this trait triggers and then goes on cooldown. So you might want to be wary of that if you are a tactical captain. Crew complement of 500, which is pretty much the lowest a cruiser can get. I have 18.7 power transfer rate. Defense bonus goes up to almost 90%. Does have a 1.3 shield modifier, so it has a lot of shield. There you can see the resistances, crit chance, and severity. And a quick look at the turn rate and speed. Here you can see I still have my standard assortment of crit D3, crit D4 anti-protons. Like I said in my earlier video, I am planning on changing these to damage times 3 pen weapons. It's just a little bit of a slow process. Also have the Iconian 3P set with the deflector, impulse engine, and shield. And my old stalwart the Spire Warp Core, taken up to Elite. Running an EPS Conductive RCS console in here. The console from the Samsar. The Bioneural Infusion Circuit. Tachyokinetic Plasmonic Leech. A couple of Flowcap Embassy consoles with Plasma Burst. And four Locator consoles. This basically has the same traits that I usually run, a blade of shell, beam barrage, biotech patch for a little bit extra hull healing, elusive for a little bit extra defense, fluidic cocoon, inspirational leader, intense focus, pattern recognition for a little bit extra, harder shields, and point blank shot. Running all hands on deck. Reciprocity, improved pedal to the metal, and supremacy. 
Now, normally, instead of Supremacy, I would run Energy Weapon Cycle. This one right here. But they managed to completely break it with the last patch, and it does not work at all right now. My Space Reputation traits are the same as always. Critical Severity, Critical Chance, Armor Pen, and the Offensive Auxiliary Power Configuration from the Nakura Rep. Since this is a reciprocity build, I'm running Tac Pattern Omega, Beta, Tac Team, Fa 3, and Chemocyte Weight Laced Weaponry 2. This Fa 1 here is just an extra in case I get a little bit of lag, and Fa 3 is a little bit late. Directed Energy Modulation, Emergency Power to Weapons 3 and 1. And here I'm running Reverse Shield Polarity. Engineering Team, Science Team, and Hazard Emitters too. Specializations, I'm running the Intelligence Officer as uh, Primary and Pilot as Secondary. I'm going to show you a quick look at my skill tree. And my duty officers. I have the Space Warfare Specialist. This one is variable. You can put whatever you want in there. I still have one copy of ZMOC and a TAC team DOF in here. Two con officers. These are there just in case I have a little pro bit of a problem with reciprocity. Um, I don't have if I don't have enough aggro and it's not proccing properly, these will give it a little bit of assistance. Agent Narul for healing while attack pattern beta is up. Marion for a little bit of a boost to directed energy modulation. And a fabrication engineer to give a uh, little bit extra duration for reverse shield polarity. Just going to show you the console that comes with the ship. As you can see here, it gives a, a few passive buffs to shield re regeneration, the shield capacity, and um, damage resistance rating versus chronoton. When you trigger this ability with this console, you get um, a lot more damage resistance for 20 seconds, immunity to chronoton weapons, and immunity to movement impairing control effects, plus some other assorted little buffs. Now you might be thinking, why chronoton weaponry? Well, in lore, canon lore, um, the Zal actually had a war with the Krenim, and the Krenim used chronoton weaponry, and I believe the Zal actually managed to take a lot of territory from the, uh, from the Krenim. So it would make sense that they have immunity to the Krenim's weaponry in there. Taking a look at the two-piece, the Temporal Shield Matrix comes from the Krenum Imperium Warship, which I showed in my previous video. Upon activation of a Science Bridge Officer ability, you get plus three defense, and some energy damage resistances, and the stack five times. Next up, we're going to take a look at some of the different shield visuals that uh, we can equip on this ship.
All right, admirals, next up, I am going to take the ship into a Argala patrol under advanced difficulty to see how she performs. We'll be right back after the action bit. Well, there you have it, a very solid cruiser. I would give it a 8.5 out of 10. Not the best cruiser out there, but definitely not a slouch. The Zal Heavy Cruiser Tier 6. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out all our friends at the STO Continuum such as Valkafax, S.A. Ross on the Pilot Review Stream, and Timberwolf.